Good morning, this is Jeremy. It's Sunday, December the 6th, and uh, I'm just on my balcony here. It's absolutely freezing. And this morning I want to look at uh, receiving GPS and putting the um, information on OpenCPN. So what I've got here is I've got my VHF antenna. I'm just going to use that to see what the uh, power density, the noise power density is like at the GPS receive frequency, which is 1.57 gigahertz. And then here we've got a, an active patch antenna. That's what I'm going to use for the GPS receiver. Um, it has um, it's a PCB with a, an antenna design etched on it, and it's got an amplifier attached to it. So it gets rid of uh, problems with the noise figure. And let's go inside here. So what I'm looking at here is I'm looking at the receive power level at 1.57 gigahertz. Uh, center frequency is 1.5742, that's the GPS L1 frequency, and I'm sweeping, let's say, 2.5 megahertz either side, and it looks like it's minus 100 dBm. Now, in the blog post, I did some calculations on what the received signal level of the GPS signal is, and I think it's around minus 127, so you can see it's below noise level. So using the VHF antenna there, we're not going to see any GPS signal. Here's what I'm using here. Um, that little connector assembly here of SMAs to BNCs and PL259s is how I get into the spectrum analyzer. I'm using a signal hound spectrum analyzer. I've got a DC block in here just in case because later on we're going to put the act active antenna on which has three volts on the center conductor. So that's just showing you what the received power level is like. Over here, this is my GPS receiver. It's in here. It's a, a Trimble. It uh, dates back to 2003. This is a kit uh, I got from, I think it was Elector Magazine. Excellent kit, and it's got a Trimble Lassen IQ 12-channel GP receiver inside. So it's got a USB connection here. Inside there's an FTDI uh, 232 chip, which is a virtual COM port. And it takes the serial data from the GPS receiver, which is the NEMA 0, um, 0803 uh, format and it takes that data and it sends it to the PC. Here's where the active patch antenna comes in and there's 3 volts, 3.3 volts in the center conductor to power the amplifier on the chip. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at that signal on the computer. Here's my older um, GPS receiver. This is a Garmin uh, GPS 38. Still works really well. It's got a serial connector on it. Uh, unfortunately it's an RS-232 and this is an RS-232 to USB adapter, again, using the FTDI-232 chip. The problem with those chips on here and on the Lassen is that when you go into Windows 10, it doesn't recognize that, um, that chip. Hard to believe. It's one of, one of the most popular chips around, that uh, virtual COM port. Anyways, we can, uh, we can get around that using Linux, so that's what we're going to do. Okay, so I'm on my Windows 10 laptop now. And as I said, as I mentioned uh, previously, the uh, Garmin GPS 38, and, uh, which dates back to 1994, and the an IQ Trimble receiver, the 12 channel receiver, which dates to around 2003, they, um, they have a serial port, a virtual COM port, using an FTDI chip. The driver is not detected in Windows 10. Uh, so I was wondering, well, how am I going to show that? And then I realized the... Um, I can use Linux. I've got it on this uh, Windows 10 laptop. I've got Ubuntu 20.04 running on a virtual machine. So let's go in there and we'll have a look at that. So let me log in here. So I've got OpenCPN running now. Okay, and uh, I'll show you in a minute how you connect that. And there's my location. Uh, which is 43 degrees 42.6 minutes north, 79 degrees 24 uh, minutes uh, west. Now let's um, let's just do a, a little bit of experimenting here. What you have to do when you first uh, get into Ubuntu, let's open a terminal window here. So there's a terminal. Um, what you have to do is to see if you can detect the driver. So um, you type in dmessage 
grep FTDI, and that just tells you that it's detected uh, the FTDI uh, driver. So you can see it's detected in Ubuntu 20.04. Now the next thing you can do is let's just check and see that the driver is putting out some information. So I can use the terminal putty. There's putty. And we'll go into serial mode here. And the device is called TTY USB 0. So if I connect that, I should see the uh, NEMA 0803 code coming out of the uh, last and IQ receiver. Whoops, I made a mistake there at the wrong baud rate. So I got to go back and do that again. Okay, so we put in um, TTY USB 0 and it's 480801 none. That's what's coming out of the Lassen GPS receiver. There we go. So we should see our NEMA data coming out of there. The way I remember NEMA is I think of Nemo, Captain Nemo on the Nautilus. There we go. So there's those are our um, NEMA codes coming out. And for each one of those codes there's a particular meaning. Okay, so that that shows that we're getting data out of there. So now we can connect to OpenCPN. And I'll just locate it here, OpenCPN. There we go. So there's my GPS coordinate. How do I set it up? I go into settings here, uh, connections. And here it is down here. It's it's a serial data port dev TTY USB zero and it's at forty eight hundred. So what you would do is you would add a connection here. Um, call it a serial connection. The device would be a slash dev slash TTY USB zero and the baud rate would be forty eight hundred and priority one. Okay, and that's how you uh, connect your GPS. I've also, um, I also went outside with my iPhone and I compared the uh, coordinates I'm getting here uh, with what I received on the iPhone and they're very, very close they're within almost uh, a couple of seconds, so that's pretty good. So in a later post, what I'm going to try and do is um, I'm going to see if I can receive the GPS signal using the RTL SDR. Now we, we just saw from the spectrum analyzer that the noise level was um, much higher than the projected receive signal level. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the patch antenna from the Lassen IQ module and I'm going to connect it to the RTL SDR. I have to go inside the box and I've got to um, uh, I've got to access the ant receive antenna signal and then bypass the three volts so I don't uh, I don't cook up the chip. So we'll do that probably in the next post.